The platysma is a large sheet of muscle in the superficial fascia of the neck. It arises below the clavicle and ascends through the neck to the mandible. Some fibers insert on the mandible, while others fuse with muscles around the corner of the mouth. Contraction of the platysma tenses the skin of the neck and depresses the corners of the mouth. It will also depress the mandible when the muscles that elevate the mandible are relaxed. The mandible is the only bone of the skull that has a movable articulation with another bone. That is if we don't include the ear ossicles. This occurs at the temporomandibular joint. Four muscles move the mandible, and these muscles are called the muscles of mastication. The masseter is one of the muscles of mastication. The masseter muscle derives its name from the fact that it is one of the major contributors to chewing, because masseter means chewer. The masseter has an origin on the zygomatic arch and inserts on the lateral side of the ramus of the mandible. Contraction of the masseter elevates the mandible. The temporalis has an origin on the bones of the temporal fossa, mainly the temporal bone, and inserts on the coronoid process of the mandible. It also elevates the mandible, but in addition will retract the mandible. When you remove the ramus of the mandible in this model, you reveal the two muscles that have origins on the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. The medial pterygoid muscle is a quadrangular muscle that has two heads. A deep head attaches to the medial surface of the lateral plate of the pterygoid process, and a superficial head that attaches to the tuberosity of the maxilla. Both heads insert on the medial surface of the mandible near the angle of the mandible. The medial pterygoid mainly elevates the mandible and assists the lateral pterygoid in protruding the lower jaw. The lateral pterygoid is triangular in shape and has two heads. The upper head originates from the inferior surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid, and the lower head originates from the lateral surface of the lateral plate of the pterygoid process. Both, the fibers of both heads are oriented almost horizontally and attached to the capsule of the temporomandibular joint. Contraction of this muscle protrudes the lower jaw, and this muscle is a major protruder of the lower jaw. When both the medial and the lateral pterygoid muscles contract together on one side, they move the chin to the opposite side. Hence, these muscles are mainly responsible for the side-to-side -side movements of the lower jaw during chewing. 